Now, I began to share on Sunday on the topic, the overcomers. Uh, that was in form of a message. Tonight, we are going to have a study. There are some details that uh, we also need to scratch and bring out. So, we are going to have a study tonight. Hallelujah. All right, the overcomers. We are reading Revelation chapter 2. And um, on Sunday, we read verses 1 to 7. Today, we are going to start reading from verse 8. Verse 8 to 11. I read. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna writes, These things saith the first and the last, who was dead and is alive. I know your works and tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews, and are not, but they are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Verse 11, he who has an heir, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, now what I began to share on Sunday about the overcomers was the message of Jesus to the seven churches which were in Asia Minor of those days. John was on the island of Patmos and that was a result of persecution. Okay? And uh, Jesus appeared to him and sent him to those churches. Uh, now, those were not the only churches in Asia Minor. But those were the seven that were picked out by Jesus for him to deliver the messages. I want to ask a question. If there was no hope of John going back home, why would Jesus send him to them? Hallelujah. Did you get my question? He was exiled there and abandoned to die. If there was no hope of him returning home, would Jesus have to be sending him to those churches? Will he? No. Jesus might not have told him that I will make sure you are out of this place. But him sending him, already he's confident he's going back home. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm saying that for a reason. Sometimes, sometime, uh, you may be in some situations, circumstances, and uh, you are praying, and it seems God is not speaking about that particular thing itself. Okay? But he may be telling you something else that actually overshadows that, or that will even outlive that. Praise Jesus. That's building confidence in us. It's a sign that it's telling you that see, look at this one, just overlook it. That is something more than that. It's something beyond that. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> or somebody inside the prison, and uh, the Lord is saying, Don't worry. Uh, uh, maybe maybe even say, Don't worry. You are inside the prison, and he's telling you that, eh, you know, uh, by, uh, by the next three years, I want you to do something for me in America. Of course, you know that you are leaving that prison. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, these seven churches were picked out by Jesus. And uh, on Sunday, we look at the first of those churches, the church of Ephesus. From the accounts we gathered from church history, John actually, when he left the island, God gave him the privilege of going to pastor some of those churches. Hallelujah. So, you see, um, who else was more qualified to pastor them? When God has already made known to him the details 
of the situations in those churches. Maybe the leaders of those churches failed and he was asked to go there to go and do some things. Or maybe he went there as an apostolic uh, overseer to help them in some things. Hallelujah. Amen. But the history recorded that he still went there and in fact uh, we are going to see today another church. This second church uh, was where he raised uh, a disciple called Polycarp. Alright? That's why I told you that this evening we are doing a study. So, here, when we read in chapter 2, verse 8, uh, it says, Unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, many of these churches, actually, maybe like about five or six of these seven churches, uh, today, they are part of the country of Turkey. Different segments or regions in Turkey. As a, you know, Turkey is one of the biggest countries in Europe. High, I mean, densely populated, okay? And uh, had a wide coverage, expanse of land, okay? Now, Ephesus used to be a great commercial center of Asia Minor, very close to the Aegean Sea by description. That's uh, according to geography. And it was the primary center for the worship of the goddess Diana. Remember, in the book of Acts of the Apostles, uh, when in chapter 19, uh, Paul went to Ephesus. Remember? Chapter 19, verse 1. The Bible said that uh, he came to Ephesus and saw some disciples and asked them, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said, We have not even heard that there's any Holy Spirit. Could it be that some people also are believers today and uh, they have not really heard about the Holy Spirit? Not that they have not heard the name, but they have not really, really heard about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> because that is even between just hearing about the name of the Holy Spirit and really heard about the Holy Spirit in the sense, in the sense of is a person with power. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Okay? And so, uh, the Bible said that there were 12 of them and Paul ministered to them and they received the Holy Spirit and the Bible says they began to speak in tongue and prophesy. These disciples already were baptized according to the baptism of John. So they were either John's disciples or they were converted by Apollos. You know, Apollos also took the part of John the Baptist. Alright? He was preaching, he was teaching uh, according to the baptism of John the Baptist also before Paul met him. Sorry, before Apollos. Uh, Aquila and Priscilla met him. And the Bible says they took him in. And when you read chapter 18, you will see all that. And they expanded, they taught him more. The way of uh, truth more uh, profoundly. Hallelujah. Okay? So now, after all the episode of Paul visiting them, and the Bible broke out in Ephesus. The Bible said he was there for a long time. He was teaching, making more convert, discipling them. So much that the, the magicians the witches and wizards, they began to bring their charm and there, were, there was a great repentance in the town. Hallelujah. And it was awesome. Okay? But because of that, there were also commotion. Okay? There were commotions. Some people felt, no, this Paul is going too far. He's preaching that uh, Diana, <laughs> who is our God or goddess, is not a God. So they gathered themselves together and began to, you know, they got gang up against uh, Paul and uh, that resulted in uh, some commotions. They began to shout Grace is Diana, the God of the Ephesians. Grace is Diana. If you read Acts, you see all that there, all those things are can't stay. So uh, Ephesus was the primary town or city where the goddess Diana was worshipped, was the center of her worship. Some call it Artemis. Right? Artemis. Uh, God, the goddess Artemis. I think they are the same thing. Okay? So, those are things that were known about Ephesus. Today we are going to Smyrna, but there is a reason I'm just mentioning, I'm talking something about Ephesus again. Because where I landed up on Sunday, there was a statement made by Jesus. Look at verse 5. Revelation 2, 5. He said, Remember therefore from where you are falling and repent and do the first works then he said or else I will come unto you quickly 
and we remove your candlestick or your lampstand out of his place except you repent the question is was jesus just trying to romance was he just emotional was he really serious about what he was saying did he mean what he said because sometimes believers are tempted to think that whatever it is we are doing everything is accepted like that god doesn't bother it's not he doesn't care everything is okay many of us are not conscious of the fact that he, he said he knows our works and he said i will walk in between i walk you know among the churches and he examines things that happen and he look at how we, what we do and how we do things and he also sees beyond the physical like i was saying something he also sees into our heart and know our motives he said remember where you are falling from all these studies we are doing all the learning teachings and all that we do we hear the word we do all this they are not for jokes brothers and sisters whatever it is when we sit down and we hear the word of god we are already saying now god examine me based on the things of our heart oh yes it's like a student in school nobody is going to ask you something somewhere from an afar they will ask you based on the things you have been taught they have a syllabus for you the same way it is sometimes we we forget that there is a demand that's why jesus talked about some people who are foolish and some people who are wise those who hear and do it those who hear and refuse to do it is the word of god changing us can you hear what jesus says concerning the ephesians the person uh, especially to the uh, Ephesians, scholars say it's one of the most spiritual uh, uh, book in the Bible. Read the epistles to the I mean Ephesians again. You will see. You will see the great things in that place. That was where they talk about praying for their hands of understanding to be enlightened. They talk about being strengthened with might, talk about being rooted in love, grand in love, the depth, the height, the length, you know, all those dimensions. They talk about God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask. Also talk about uh, spiritual warfare. I mean, all kind of things, all manner of things. So they were fervent disciples or believers, okay. But some things went wrong. That's why they were told that they are falling and they should examine themselves. Then he said, "If you don't, he said, I will come unto you quickly, and will remove your lap stand." Now, I'm referring to that for a reason. Today, today, not just today, this has happened for, it should be going to more than 100, 100, 100 years now. The, that place where Ephesus was, that particular site, today is just ruins. Um, there is, it's said that there is a small town there filled with people with no single Christian, the lampstand is removed. So Jesus does not make jokes. Imagine him coming to speak to John like this on the highland. No, he meant business. Because we may just read it and just pass and say, okay, this is what God said about them and all that. He said, what I say unto one, I say unto all. The same is true for us today. He said, we should watch we should always examine our love for him and our works. Okay? He said, repent and do the first works. Don't let me come and remove the lampstand. Um, that doesn't mean that God has sent them to hell. That's not the point. Alright? Because Christianity, like I always told you, is more than heaven and hell. You know, many times we always, when people are so simple-hearted that they think Christianity is either you just go to heaven or go to hell. There is more to it than that. There are a lot of other things inside Christianity. Otherwise, he will have saved us and taken us to heaven immediately. If he has allowed us to live on earth, there are, there are a lot of consequences. There are rewards and there are consequences to our actions and inactions. Hallelujah. But that's why he won't talk about reward after, after this. Okay? So, imagine imagine that you are destined to attain some, some height or have some reward, but we are not able to attain and receive the reward. 
the, the, the reward was uh, that's verse 7 right check verse 7 for me he said whoever has an hair let him hear what the spirit says to the churches to him who overcome I will give to eat of the tree of life that's a reward hallelujah praise Jesus now this manner this turn is also uh, in the region of Tokyo of today and uh, the name uh, is uh, a region or a city that is called Isma I-Z-M-I-R Izm, Izm, or maybe Izmer or some way they pronounce it okay and it is said to be 50 miles northwest of Ephesus and then close to Pergamos so it's around the same vicinity also in the Aegean coast this is uh, the home of Polycarp one of the church fathers uh, after the first set of apostles he was the bishop of Smyrna this man served God so, uh, so much he loved God so much and he made so many converts concerning it was said that he became very old you know after John finally died as a very, as a very old man he uh, succeeded John the apostle and uh, at 86 year old he was taken, was arrested, and he was told to deny Jesus. And uh, not just to deny Jesus, but you know there was a problem during the time of uh, these apostles and those uh, those in the first century, first and second century. The Roman Empire they will build a statue of Caesar and ask people to bow and worship it. So it's more than just saying, "Say I don't, I'm not having Jesus again." They were forced to worship, bow to the idol of Caesar, to the statue of Caesar. They were asked to kiss his feet of a statue. It was that serious. And if you refuse to do it, they might kill you or punish you or imprison you. So they told Polycarp to do that, to worship Caesar. He said, I can never worship any man or any statue but Jesus. He said, are you not going to deny Jesus? He said, he has been so good and faithful to me for these past 86 years. It's too late for me to deny him. Light your fire. And they tie him to the tree and they burnt him to death. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I need, to, I need to say that for a reason so that you will see some things that we have read about Smyrna. Okay? Now in verse 9, Jesus says concerning them, I know. Okay, in verse 8, the last statement in verse 8, he said, the one who was dead and is alive. The reason for that statement was because, you know, uh, when you read any, oh, each of these churches, the introduction has something to do with that particular church. And then the reward. Very, very specific and peculiar to each of the churches. Uh, this church uh, had gone through a lot of persecution. Many of them were have been killed. So when he said the one who was dead and is alive, he's telling them that, see, even though you die, you will live again. That's why he was saying that. Hallelujah. Some years back, okay, let me just share this with you. Uh, I was still a student on campus. I wanted to understand the book of Revelation. So I began to do fasting and prayer. <laughs> I was fasting and praying, Lord, I want to understand. That was when I learned some, any of these things. I saw that each introduction to each of the churches has a significant message also about what is happening in that church that time so he said in verse 9 i know thy works and your tribulation first i explained to you on sunday about the matter of the works our works has to do with all that we are doing what are the things we do for the lord uh, maybe in church generally or just for the lord generally or what we do also uh, as a profession, as a career, because we are meant to also do it as unto the Lord also. Hallelujah. If you are a businessman, you are supposed to do your business as unto the Lord. So he said, I know your works, everything you do. Even, even how I make decisions, he says, I know everything about you. Um, I read for you to you on Sunday, Matthew chapter 6, I won't read that again. Verse 1 to talk about how you give your arms 
you know, your charitable deeds, your kind uh, uh, gestures. Then verses 5 and 6 talk about your prayer. So prayer is a kind of work too. You know I said it in person on Sunday. Let me say it to you again. He knows your work. And there is a reward for it. Give me that message chapter, chapter 6. Uh, you know as a form of encouragement to you. Chapter 6 verses 5 and 6. Okay? Verse 5 first. He said, when you pray, don't be like hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogue in the corner of the street that they may be seen of men. These are not my focus. Verily, I say to you, they have their reward. Verse 6. Here's where I'm going. He said, when you pray, enter your closet. When you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in secret. Your father who is in secret shall reward you openly. When you pray for the saints, you are walking. Your father will reward you. That is the truth. There is a reward for it. He said, I know you. Don't ever think you are laboring in vain. You don't ever think it doesn't amount to anything. Anytime you get on your knees and pray for the work of God, for the church, for the saints, even for God's servant, like Paul said, and for me, God sees and he will reward you. There is a reward. Great reward. Hallelujah. And if you don't pray also, talk. I hope you got my point. God is just now. If you don't, there is nothing to reward. Hallelujah. So, there are rewards for all that we do. You are, for instance, in choir. You are always praying for the choir department. There is reward for it. Too. I know your work, says the Lord. I'm prophesying to you now. I'm not even preaching. That's the truth. It just came upon my spirit as a prophecy. I know your work, says the Lord. Whatever it is you do, the Lord watches. And he will reward you. Hallelujah. Okay? Then in verse uh, 16, check verse 16 for me. Moreover, when you fast, don't be like hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. All those are not focused, we are not examining what fasting is. That's for another time. Finally, I said to you, they have their reward. Next verse. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face that you appear not to men as if you are fasting but to your father who is in secret and your father who is in secret shall reward you openly see the point is everything we do there is a reward for it the lord sees he knows and he rewards hallelujah praise the lord colossians chapter 1 verse 9 colossians 1 9 for this cause we also since the day we heard it, did not cease to pray for you. And to the end that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom. He says, since the day when we heard it, heard what? So please help us go back. Let us see what he heard of. Okay? For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you as in all the world and brings forth fruit. As it dealt also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. As he also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Who also declared unto us what? What? Your love in the spirit. You see, the love you show to the saints, God knows. I know your works your fervency of love towards the saints. I know your works. He said, Epaphras has told us all these things. I know your works. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Even the things you do that we don't even know you are doing, God knows and he will reward you. Yes. You know, like I was sharing with you the other time, one day I came here, I saw this. He didn't tell me I was going to do anything. One day I came here, I saw this. God knows. He sees what you do. Somebody came, he bought us a microphone, a wireless microphone. God knows your work. Another people, set of people say, we are going to team up and buy another set of my wireless microphone, this one and the other one. And God knows your work. Hallelujah. Um, like I was sharing with you on Sunday, give it to is a, a form of work. I know your works. The Lord sees you who give. He knows. We may not even know, but God knows. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Do you know that? 
one day I was talking with uh, another set of two pastors and as we were discussing they were saying some things they said uh, by their discovery with their discovery that many pastors don't give <laughs> they only preach about giving <laughs> praise Jesus and you know some pastors we always complain you know God knows your works now God is not mocked hallelujah you can't mock God, you can't deceive God God knows your works hallelujah Amen. pastors who only take from members God also knows and pastors who give to members God knows hallelujah Amen. praise the living Jesus okay uh, my wife told me that uh, uh, they were going to have a, a picnic for children and they were talking about what they, they are going to buy and get and all that you know what I told her? I said, we are not taking a dime from the church first. If we need to add small, maybe. But tell people to they support the thing. And, you know, I just told her that day, maybe in the morning. And you know, in the afternoon as we were going home, she told me that everything has been taken care of. God knows. <laughs> he sees. Hallelujah. There are things that we may not even know or see probably I, I'm not really sure I'm, I'm, I know those details of the people maybe he told me like, I, don't, I didn't pay attention God knows of the time I don't pay attention to some things <laughs> that's the truth but God knows hallelujah praise the living Jesus some of you take your money and you go around visiting members and we don't even know God knows you see I'm saying all that to encourage you, you see there is a reward for even faithfulness uh, the verse that uh, uh, the media people just showed us now that some verses he talk about their faithfulness. Uh, what that verse is that? Was that? Verse 7. Okay. As you learn, open for us, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. Even faithfulness in doing the assignment he has been committed to do. Faithfulness. God says, I know your works. What you have been asked to do, even here, how faithful are you? God knows. Hallelujah. All right. So let's go back to Smana now. So in, in chapter 2 of uh, Revelation, verse 9, it says, I know your work. Um, then it says, I also know your tribulation. Your tribulations. Uh, that's your trials, your sufferings, your trials, your tough difficulties your suffering. Your, some version actually call it sufferings. Now, this is not suffering maybe uh, because uh, you are lazy, you are suffering lack or not. No, that's not the kind of suffering or witches are oppressing you. No. It's not a while, maybe some witches or no. that's not the kind of suffering we are talking about or demonic or whatever. Mm-mm. We are not talking about generational cause. No. Not the kind of suffering. We are talking about suffering for the sake of the gospel. Suffering for the sake of the kingdom suffering for Christ's sake. He said, I know your tribulation. Now, this particular church, Smana, they have been passing through persecutions. So that was the, the, one, the persecuted one you were talking about now. Their tribulation was as a result of their persecution. Because of the gospel, they were, many of them have been killed. Many of them, you know, have been tortured and imprisoned. And uh, we'll come back to verse 9. Let me quickly show you, take you to verse uh, verse 10 because he talked about the future suffering also he said I know the one you are going through and I said let me prepare your heart more is coming he said, fear none of those things which you shall suffer that is the one that will still come in behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison have you ever been in prison for the sake of the gospel let me see your hand <laughs> Christianity in our own time is uh, Jekyll Jekyll Oh, Jekyll, Jekyll. So that I won't speak Yoruba for you. Okay? That's the language I just coined out for you now. Not, it's not Yoruba. Oh. It's Jekyll, Jekyll. You know what that means? <laughs> ah. Many times, many of the things we complain about, they are nothing compared to the things that these people have gone through. Okay? I want to ask you, how many of you have been failed by your lecturer because of the gospel? Or because, you, because you're a child of God? Let me see your hand. Can you imagine? No hand. How many of you have been beaten because you preached to somebody 
about Jesus and they beat you. May I see your hand? Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm coming to that. Uh, let's, let's come for the big one and come to the smaller ones and keep seeing whether we have really gone through anything at all for the gospel. Maybe all you have gone through is just for yourself. Not for Jesus. Have you really gone through stuff for Jesus? How many of you have been insulted and abused because you preach the gospel? One, two. At least I can see a few hands. Not just that they said, no, we don't want to hear you. They actually abuse you. They call you names. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you stand for Jesus. Sometimes it might not be because you preach you, but because you take a standard. No, this is what the Bible says. No, this is what just will have me do. I won't. Hallelujah. How many of you have been stoned? You don't go to mission feet now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or maybe you go to the other places where they will easily accept you. That are some pla- ah, Jesus. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you, they spit on your face. They do the thing like this. Salabia from your arm. Pow, on your face. For the sake of Christ. Let me see your hand. You see, people have gone through stuff for Jesus. For Jesus. My wife knows this because I've told her before. They've done that to me. They beat me very well. Kick me. Spat on my face. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and I just, when they left me there, some people encouraged me to go and report them. I said, no, I won't. I was even happy. Because I just remember the Bible. That the apostles who were happy. Show me, please give us Acts chapter 5. Um, some things that follow the antecedents of the uh, <laughs> we all love now, Acts chapter 3 verse 5, 6, 7 we love that scripture Peter said ah, silver and gold I have none but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus rise up and walk, we love that verse 7 right? Hallelujah. Uh, verse 6 and then verse 7 he said, I took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and he was jumping. We love that. Some things followed it, and they were not on that table. Not because they stole, or they lied, or they cheated, or they did any wrong thing, but because of this. Because of this. Have you been called named, and abused, and insulted, and backbited, and did all kind of, just because you believe the truth of the gospel, and you held on to it? Do you know what I face for talking about speaking in tongues? You would think that's ordinary. You don't understand. Or talking about the gospel that is all about Jesus. For talking about the new Testament that Christ has delivered from, 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 the, from the law, from legalism. Hallelujah. They arrested them, imprisoned them. The Lord delivered them from prison. Supernaturally. They arrested them again. And they said, don't talk about Jesus again, no. He said, okay. He said, but we can't do about without talking about Jesus. Also. So, because of that, they went again, they were preaching, they took them again. And I said, them. So, in chapter 5, and because of miracles, a lot of miracles were happening. All kinds of miracles. In fact, chapter 5, we read verse 12. It's awesome. He said, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Ha! Now, this is bracket, this parenthesis. Jump to the end of the parenthesis. Maybe that's verse 14. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the street and laid them on beds and couches that at the least shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Hallelujah. Verse 16. And there came multitude of the cities round about Israel and bringing sick folks and those who were vexed with unclean spirit and they were healed everyone. Great things happened. Hallelujah. Go to verse 40. Just to save my time. And when they are called the apostles, they beat them. Because of all these things. They, I, I just saved you time so that you don't have to read. They arrested them, put them in prison and all that. They beat them. Now, that agreed is because Gamaliel told them that, please, if people are going too far, they said, okay, we are not going to fire again. But they now took them. Instead of prison again. They beat them and they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. So that day I remember that too, and I was happy. <laughs> Verse 42. 
he didn't stop and daily in the temple and in every house <laughs> they were even going from house to, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ so Jesus said I know your works and your tribulation your suffering and persecution then he said please prepare your heart more persecution is still on the way for you he said fear none of those things that you are going to suffer behold the devil will cast some of you into prison that you may be tried you see these things are to try us they are to, they are to strengthen our faith and they are to make us stronger and better hallelujah he said that you may be tried and you shall have tribulation 10 days then he said what be thou faithful even if it means you are going to die our mindset is usually there is that i know god will deliver me because i'm serving him because it's for for the sake of the kingdom i know he will deliver me he said sometimes you may need to die in the process and i'm telling you the truth this is gospel truth this is the word of god sometimes persecution for the sake of the kingdom leads to death we are not praying that anybody should die but you see when we don't take believers to prepare they think it's all about so by the time they are now in some situation they will say ah, ah. so is god no more faithful they will think god is no more faithful if you don't teach them a right that's why i always want to teach you the holistic word the whole word of god so that you would have a balanced understanding of what the gospel is about paul says he has delivered us he's delivering us and he will yet deliver us hallelujah but you know the three people said that our god is able to deliver us that's not it's not a question of his ability he said we know he's able he has that but even if not please know that we're not going to bow hallelujah Amen. didn't you see that in the account of paul in second Corinthians chapter 11 chapter 12 how we talk about how different kind of sufferings that he went through so we will have said that if god is really god and paul is really serving god if really god has called him how come he god did not deliver him he said many times he was ambushed by thieves and robbers he said there are times he said they beat him he said uh how many times he said he received 39 stripes how many times huh five times i think five different occasions they beat him five uh, 39 stripes then he said one time i was beaten with a rod no stripes oh jesus there was a time they stoned him and they thought he was dead they threw him out of the city he said go and die they thought bread probably actually he has died only god knows maybe he died really because you know when they want to do they stone you to death they will check whether you are dead and they leave you but god raised him up so that he could still do more work hallelujah praise jesus hallelujah. praise jesus many of the things that we read from church history are so touching there was a woman many years back hundreds of years back who was arrested for making too much many, too many converts the woman was infectious that if you just meet her you know that you, you are you belong you come to christ her life was so infectious if you get close to somebody when your life be infectious we infect them with gospel with jesus this one was arrested and she was to be beheaded this is not bible this is this apple after bible was written you understand what i'm talking about it's in our contemporary time you know that you don't think maybe because they are apostles they have some special power no this woman actually was not even a, a worker in the church she just loved jesus they carry sword to cut her head the sword was missing it so it, those soldiers they were in turn they were trying in turn and they were getting tired just the, once they carry like this they just go to another side they tried and tried and tried it could not enter after a long time the woman too was tired so this one carries sword like this he just held the sword and put it on, on her own truth he guided it to her own truth but they were not going to leave her anyway if he don't if he didn't die they will see him prison. they will just do you know and there was another woman the same thing happened in our own case the thing also was missing you know what he finally said he said lord please i am ready to come home immediately he said that the sword just entered these people have gone to stores for jesus hallelujah 
are you prepared to go through tribulations, persecutions for Jesus? Smana had that. Please take, give me back that scripture. So he says some of you will be thrown into prison and um, he said be faithful even it means it's going to attract death. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 and they overcame him by what? And by what? Many times we put full stop there. Is that not how we quote it? 70% of the time we just say that and then we began to pray and say that you are overcome. Like just shout. Why don't you read everything to the end? And they did not love their lives, even to the point of death. He who loves his life shall lose it. He who hates his life shall save it, even for my own sake. Hallelujah. Um, hating yourself doesn't necessarily mean that you don't care about yourself or no, no, that's not we're talking about enriching your life. We are only saying that you love just so much that you that even if it costs your life, you don't care. And some small, small things will happen. We start telling lies. Small thing, no, nobody is killing you, nobody is you know already we're we already denying him. Already <laughs> small small things. So. What of when they now arrest you and said you are going to kill you for <laughs> Uh, you will say no, Amy, Amy, my I never, I, I, I'm not even a believer. I'm not born again. My, my dad is a Muslim, <laughs> like Peter. Praise Jesus. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But I'm preparing your heart that that is what Christianity is about. It's not just all about God. Give me this. Write this for me. God will do this for you. God will do that for you. That is part of Christianity. But there is more to it. Okay. Hmm. And uh, even we will minister to people. I think one of the things we can do faithfully is not to only always tell people that even when we profess when we give word to people, when all, if all our word is always that uh, uh, God will give you this, come with this and in your life, and all, there is never a time that God is even warning people. Eh? <laughs> that is not the time that God discerns somebody's heart. That this evil you are thinking about. You know what Peter said to that man? He said, Pray to God for the man that maybe God will forgive you the evil that you are thinking about in your heart. He said to that sorcerer. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Okay. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. The peculiarity of this church is persecution and tribulation. That's why I dwell on it. The other ones are very few things. And not only so, (laughs) you know, when we read verses like this, it's good that you understand what he was saying before. But before you go back, just stay. I will show you. He said, but we glory in tribulation also. That is, we rejoice when we are being persecuted, when we are going to trial. He said, okay, we glory. We glory means we boast and we rejoice. We are glad. Knowing that tribulation works patience. Now, here he's talking about tribulation. And he said, it will teach us, to, it will help us to learn patience, Right? But you said, and not only so, which means they are joined together with something. <laughs> so go back to verse 1. Uh, it, may hit some, some of you, it may hit you hard. Therefore, being justified by faith, very, very lovely scripture. We have peace with God. Talking about our salvation experience in Christ, and we were declared righteous, not guilty. We have peace with God. Hallelujah. We are reconciled with God. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the Bible is talking about grace. Who will not like grace? Unmerited favor. Wherein we stand. He said we are standing in grace and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So we are standing in grace. We rejoice. And then next verse, verse 3. So, and not only so. <laughs> so he's telling you that your justification an experience of uh, your, your declaration, the, the, the God's verdict concerning you that you are declared righteous and your assets into grace are accompanied with tribulations and persecutions. Because you see, you love Jesus, you love him so much that your friends who don't love him, they will, they will not like to talk with you again. When they want to share things, they won't share for you, they won't, you know, they won't give you. And you begin to feel like, ah, just because I believe in Jesus, that's why you are doing this to me. They, they just want you to feel abandoned so that you can come back to them and leave Jesus. That's why he's talking about that. Praise Jesus. So, 
Now, he says, knowing that tribulation works patience. And patience, verse 4, experience. Hey! Hallelujah. You see, the reason Jesus was telling the, uh, the church of Smyrna about persecution and tribulation is because they will become patient. They will learn how to be patient. How to tolerate things. They will be, have a large heart. They will learn to endure things. So when things happen like that, we will become mature. That's what James 1 is say, saying. But don't go there yet. All right? He said you, you will learn, you now become, you will learn what? Experience. Now you are, when somebody is experienced, we are saying he's mature. He has, he has supposed to a lot of things. So his balance is stable. Nothing can ruffle him. He has seen both the positive and negative side. Paul said, I've learned both to abandon and to be abased. I've learned to enjoy plenty and I left to enjoy scarcity. He said, I'm not ruffled. When I have, I don't mind. When I don't have, no problem. Nobody will know. Experience. It does not show on your face. Everybody else, hey, sorry, oh, hey, yeah, you are going through stuff, hey, sorry, oh. You know, not like that. So much that if they don't tell you anything, you can't know anything. Hallelujah. Experience. There is one version, I think it's the New King James Version. He said, he said, patient or endurance will produce character. I don't know whether you can find that for us. But I think I've seen, yes. He said, you will learn perseverance, which will produce what? Character. You have a strong character. You are stable. <laughs> you are balanced. Hallelujah. Amen. Not because things are not happening or, or going on in your life, but now you are. And you know, when they say character, I learned something from my, my small room many years back. I love my room a lot. Too. That man, I love him a lot. He said, do you know why they call it character? I want to ask you a question. You know, we have uh, alphabets, numbers, Another special character. All of them are called characters in computing. Okay? Like, and, comma, you know, full stop and all that. Okay. Let's take uh, two, for instance. That's a character. It's a numeric character. Two, for instance. Two in Nigeria. Is it also equal to two in China? In India? In Indonesia? (laughs) In Brazil? So, two is two anywhere in the world. Even in the Bible, too. In heaven and hell. He said it is called character because it does not change. It is stable. It's predictable. Predictable. People will say, no, I know I know him. I know him. If it's if anybody wants to cheat, I know him, he, will, he won't cheat. I know him. Character. He said it is tribulation that fashions us. It's not see, God's word normally trains us. Okay? But God does not only train us with the word, the word of God. He also exposes us to a lot of pain situations so that we become trained. And then we have strong, you know when people say you have strong character. Stable. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Let's so that we can round up now. I don't know if anybody will have a question. So I want to, I don't want to uh, exceed our time for this evening. Okay. Then next, in that our verse 9, our text, Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, I have more scripture that I will have read to you, but it will take me time, okay? You can go and study for yourself. Let me give it to you so that you can write it down. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, from verse 3 to 9. You will see that actually tribulation and persecution is part of our Christian life. Okay? Let's make progress now. I said don't go there, sir. Okay, Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. So, he said, I know your works, tribulation. The next thing is what? Poverty. <laughs> this one is very funny. I know your poverty. <laughs> but you see, you quickly put something. He said, but you are rich. So that you understand what he's talking about. He said, though you are poor in the natural, you are rich in the Lord. Only somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. You are rich in the Lord. <clears throat> and you didn't say it before because you didn't like that. Ah, no, I want money. Me, I want money. Oh, this one that you are just <laughs> you are rich in the Lord, rich in the spirit. <laughs> you know, especially when I'm, when I'm teaching, I'm teaching youth. Ah, I normally see a lot of things. When I'm talking to young people, teenagers, you know, and youth. 
Tony, I was teaching them about success. I was talking about hard work, intelligence, and all that. Ah, one guy said, excuse me, sir. Ah, all this one you are saying is too long now. <laughs> how many years? Ah, me, I want to be rich quick, quick. <laughs> I want to be rich fast. I said, no, I understand you will be rich. He said, but it's a graduate. He said, ah, all this one you are still graduating, I, <laughs> I don't want all that one. I want to be rich as fast as possible, as quick as possible. He said, there is no shortcut. He said, ah, I have no, I've learned a lot of shortcuts. I'm just still thinking of which one to take. He, he was telling me in the presence of all the other people too. I said, so which one are you going to? <laughs> he said, well, I have, there are options. He said, there is Yahoo, there, Yahoo, Yahoo. He said, there is Yahoo plus, there is Yahoo plus plus. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, ah. you know, that's many years ago. I said, but these things are bad though. He said, ah. He said, is, this, is, is, is computer now? He said, it's computer. Hmm. <laughs> Praise Jesus. He said, I know your poverty, but you are rich. Okay? Hmm. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Let's just see what verse 1, what Jesus was saying to that church. Paul also said the same thing about another church. Moreover, brethren, we do, ah, give me a, maybe HCSB. This one is too serious. We do you to wheat of the, I mean, we do you to wheat of the, <laughs> We want you to know, eh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers, about the grace of God granted to the churches of Macedonia. What grace is that? He said, during a severe testing by affliction, the abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed into the world of their generosity. What is Paul talking about? They don't have much. But even the little they have, they are willing to give everything. Which means they are rich in the Lord. Jesus says, anytime you know, we, hear, uh, we see things like that in the Bible, you see, always see that the, there is consistency about what Jesus normally say. And with the apostles in the epistles. Lay not your treasure on earth. Where thief can enter and just take everything. Even where termite can just destroy everything he said but lay your treasure in heaven where it cannot enter they cannot rust they cannot be devoured by ants or insects hallelujah praise jesus hallelujah. what he's saying is that being rich in the lord or rich towards the lord or rich in the spirit is that even though people may look at you that you don't really have but even the little you have you are giving for the sake of the gospel. You are giving. So, these people, the, the believers in Smyrna, they are not only strong in character, they are not only for persecution, they were always giving to support the work of God. They were givers. That's why he said, I know your works, that you are givers. You can give anything. I know. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A woman of God shared with us that in a church, and it's not in Lagos, it's not in Abuja, it's not in Port Harcourt, so that you don't think they are all those places they have money. Money is everywhere. That's the truth. In this town, people have money. If you see some houses that they built in that, uh, um, that's towards our, that's towards Sango. You see some houses in that place. <laughs> you wonder in this town, they build house as if they are building an estate, just one house. A mansion so big, and it's just all, so many of them. So money is everywhere. Yes, if you are always saying that there's no money in learning, that you won't have money because that's a wrong confession for a child of God to be saying. The devil just take hold of it and make sure you don't have access to money. That's why I always say it that there is money in this town, and I'm having money. <laughs> Praise Jesus. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, now he says. During a severe testing by affliction, the abundance of joy, they are joyful about it. So that woman of God said that the members of our church, they are so joyful about giving, that some of them, he said, they will enter church me, Sunday morning, early in the morning when they enter church, they will find bale of clothes. Some people will bring their oven, bring fridge, bring uh, something. And we will go and buy keyboard. Buy they just buy everything and just put them. They won't even know them. Then they be wondering, who are the people doing this one now? 
Now, let me shock you. My discovery in these few years of doing ministry, I have discovered that those who give the most are those you think they don't, they don't even have. They give so sacrificially. Those who don't have much, they give so sacrificially. That was the reason God also was banking on a widow to take care of Elijah. God knew her heart. God knew she was a sacrificer. If there is an English like that, she could give anything. Somebody was about to eat the last meal and die, and yet still managed to give it. God knows her heart. Don't know her heart now. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that overflow into the wealth or the abundance of their generosity. They were joyful about it. They did it joyfully. Not that they would give and say, ah, I gave up. I've been giving up. I've been giving up. <laughs> That's why he said, no, don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Dr. Nature told us some years back. He said, one, one pastor came to meet him. He said, I want to see you. He said, okay. Then when they sat, they were talking. He said, you want to see me? He said, yes. He said, you have always been preaching about tithes that we should give and give tithes. This man is a pastor too. The other man talking about this. He's a pastor. He said, I have been giving my pay my tithe. I have not seen anything. God has not given me anything back. So he said, he asked, since when have we been doing this? He said, for the past two years I have been giving my tithe. He said, how much have you been giving? He said, he calculated it. Everything has been given. Maybe, I think he said 2,000 or so or something. You know, he's... So, you know, people who complain are those who, who are so ridiculous. <laughs> so, he said, he said, sir, please, can you calculate everything? He calculated it. And he went in and carried the money and gave him. And the man took it. He said, that man remained wretched. Hallelujah. It should be a joyful thing. Besides, God is not even the one standing here and saying, you must bring it. Whether you give or not, what is he say? It's about even you anyway. It's so that you can have multiplication. That's why he said, if I have need of anything, will I ask you? God is not in need. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said, I know your poverty. Let's round up the, uh, our text. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. So three things were mentioned. Works, tribulation, and poverty. He said, but you are rich. They are rich in the Lord. Um, this, we may extend this beyond money, but the context is is money and material things because it's a poverty okay all right but we may also extend it that rich uh rich uh, but you are rich and as well also means that uh, they are given to uh, the things of god the things of they are you know they are committed you know they actually are hard working in the house of god and all that okay then then it also say i know the blasphemy or the slander of those who say they are jews but they are not for they are the synagogue of satan that is some people uh, is some sect of Jew, uh, Jewish people, are among these people, and uh, they were always slandering these believers. They say things uh, against them. The Bible did not give us the details of what they were saying, but when you understand, I told you that the Bible is always consistent the way it does. So when you look at once you see the matter of Jews slandering some people, you understand what he's talking about. They were being legalistic. They were saying that you must keep the law. Keep the law. That if you don't do that, you are not born again. You are not going to heaven. That's blasphemy. If you are saying, if I don't observe the law of Moses, I'm not born again. It is blasphemy. In fact, Paul, well, some people say it's not Paul, but I believe it's Paul who wrote Hebrews. The author of Hebrews said, you are insulting the blood by which you are washed. And you are doing despite of the spirit of grace. You are saying that his sacrifice is not enough. Hallelujah. He said, I know those people. I see what they are doing. Then verse 10. Fear none of those things. Okay, I've read this. Okay, yes. Uh, we should suffer. Behold, the devil cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and shall have tribulation 10 days. He said, Be thou faithful unto death. And then finally he said, And I will give you what? A crown of life. There are only two places in the Bible where the crown of life is mentioned. It is mentioned here and also in James chapter 1, verse 12. And it's always mentioned in conjunction with tribulation, persecution, and trials. So, there are different kinds of rewards for believers in heaven. So, if you want a crown of life, it means that you must be set, get set for persecution. 
get set for tribulation, get set for suffering for Christ's sake. It will attract a kind of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. He said, Blessed is the man who endure what? Trials. He has already been talking about it from previous verses. Trials of our faith. He said, For when he's tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Why? Because he loved me. Your love for him will make you not to die, not to deny him, even when you have been tried. Okay? Verse 11 now. Uh, that's the last verse. He who has an hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, he's not saying that, talking about this physical ear, he's talking about if you have a hearing here, if your ear is truly hearing, he's saying, please make sure you listen and uh, adhere to this. Your spiritual ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, he was talking to Smana, but he's saying, I'm speaking to all the churches. That's why I'm saying, whatever applies to them, apply to all of us. He who, he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Praise Jesus. The second death is the death in the lake of fire. The final judgment. So it says one of the reward also apart from the crown of life, one of the reward is that you are preserved. When you go through stuff for Jesus, instead of murmuring and complaining, know that there is something reserved for you. The crown of life. And if that crown is specialty, is actually specially designed for life, then death is not your case. Life eternal, then no to second death. Hallelujah. He's saying you will live forever with me. We will reign together for life. Hallelujah. 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 So tonight, uh, before we pray, well, we are going to pray, but I don't know. Let, let's pray first. Let's be on our feet to pray. After prayer, I may attend to questions. If there is at all. Is there any question at all? Let me see your hand. One? Only one question. Alright. So we we'll attend to that after prayer. I want to be sure so that it won't take too much time. Now, brothers and sisters, I want us to pray and talk to the Lord about the matter of our works. Once again, we prayed on Sunday. I want us to pray again. Say, I know your works. One of the reasons we need to do this is so that we don't give up. Can we talk to the Lord about this matter of faithfulness? Faithfulness in all that we do for the Lord. Diligence, dedication, commitment in all that we do for the kingdom. Can we talk to him concerning that? Can we ask the Spirit of God who is our helper? You know, I always tell you that the Holy Spirit is given to you as your helper. So, it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an instruction and it's wisdom for you to learn to always receive his help. He is your helper. Oh, I receive help. Sweet Spirit of the living God, I receive help to be faithful to be committed, to be dedicated to the cause of Christ. I receive the help of the Holy Spirit to always be faithful, to always be committed, to be loyal to the cause of the, of the kingdom. Karimo sabregedu shandala makuzia ko freketa samandele mo suprahida shakatas Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Our emphasis today has been on the matter of tribulation, persecution, suffering. Can you talk to the Lord concerning this matter? That you will be strong even when you are facing difficulty, when you are facing trials of life, when your faith is being tried. He said, Blessed is the man who endures trials, temptations. So when he's tried, he will receive the crown of life. Can you, can you receive strength? And you pray for strength to endure 
to endure temptations, trials of life, persecutions, to endure afflictions for the sake of the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray.